destruction caused in the U.S. and Canada this week by Superstorm Sandy got widespread media coverage. But as millions were left without power, those in Sandy's path turned to mobile devices and social media for information. Global Web producer Nick Logan is keeping you online. And Nick, while there was a lot of traffic online, not every tweet was as it seemed. That's right, Rebecca. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. As Sandy barreled into the U.S. East Coast this week, social media sites saw a huge upswing in traffic. It's been reported that on Monday alone, there were 4.8 million mentions of the name Sandy on the various social media sites. And according to the founder of Instagram, a photo sharing app for mobile devices, users were uploading 10 images a second with the hashtag Sandy. And of course, YouTube has been one of the best sources to see just how bad the destruction was in Sandy's path through the eyes of those affected. Now, while it's great that while a disaster is unfolding, you can rely on an almost endless stream of information coming from citizen journalists, there needs to be a bit of scrutiny used to make sure that that information, photos, and videos are all real. Such was the case this week during Sandy. Maybe it was this haunting image you saw on your Facebook wall, or this flood-ravaged fast food restaurant, or even the unbelievable scenes of sharks swimming in New Jersey floodwaters. They're unbelievable because they weren't necessarily real. That incredible storm cloud over the Statue of Liberty was actually a tornado in Nebraska, and Ronald McDonald was floating away in a 2009 art exhibit. And the sharks, well, that just didn't happen. Photo editing programs make it all too easy to fake images, and the programs are more user-friendly than ever. It's best to double check before you share. Digital photos generally carry information such as a creation date, or you can check to see if the image came from a reliable news source. But even the media sometimes gets one pulled over on them. At the height of the storm, U.S. media outlets began reporting the New York Stock Exchange was underwater. That information came from a prominent Twitter user who turned out to be playing a prank, and it was one of several tweets he put out that evening that started rumors. Although there were some lessons learned the hard way, a lot of what was put out on social media was legitimate. And if you want to check out how social media covered Sandy, head to our website, globalmaritimes.com. Rebecca? All right, thanks for that, Nick.